Jenna McKee writes, I want to invest in some new border punches and would love to hear about your favourites. My storage space is limited, so I want to make sure it's something I will love and use. Glittergirl, can you help Jana shop for super scallops? Of course I can. In fact, we've had several questions on the board about border punches lately, so I just thought today we could look at all sorts of different things like that. So I've pulled out the three border punches that I keep next to my table at all times. These are the three that I use the most often right now. That's this one called Tickets, Please by um, Jenny Bolin for Fiskers, the Notebook Edge in the American Crafts Knockout um, Punch Set, and this large scallop which looks like it has embossed dots but I just use it as just the large scallop and that one's by EK Success. So if you click over if you're interested in any of these you'll be able to find them all on the 2 P's site just underneath the project. And then this is what the American Crafts Knockout set looks like if you want to buy the large set. You can you can buy the big um, super saver type kit or you can buy all the different pieces and different patterns individually. So I just have the kit with the six designs that it comes with and you have a base that is interchangeable so you use different cartridges and, and, and punch your design and then to line it up you get these pieces that are marked with A and B so you know you're putting them in the right side and they can only fit in one place once they're there because they're not a rectangle. They're a rectangle with the corner cut off. So once you've got those in place, then you have the guides like any other border punch where it shows you the pattern so that you can match it up. So in the kit, you then get six different designs and they're all quite versatile. So I use the notebook paper the most and you can buy the notebook paper separately if you thought you would just use that one. But there's also the zigzag, this lovely dotted line, um, and a lace edge, a scalloped edge, and a a heart scalloped edge and then there are also more little cartridges that you can buy individually and add into your collection if you want. So yep, it, aside from the fact that it has cartridges it works just like any other border punch. So those are the three that I use the most often and I'm going to start today with a school themed layout because August at Two Peas in a Bucket we are going back to school even if where I am and um, it's not really back to school time just yet but I know many of you it, are going back to school already. So today, to show you different things with border punches, I grabbed a sketch from one of the free classes from 2011 at Two Peas in a Bucket. This is the January edition of Stretch Your Sketch by Jen Gallagher, and she starts with this sketch and then does a video um, showing you different things to change it around, and there's also a downloadable PDF. So I'm gonna use this and change it up once again. And I'm, it's a, a four photo sketch, but I'm going to use it with just two pictures from, um, from my own school days. So I have two school pictures to include here on the photo side, and then I'm going to use this sketch for the rest of the design. And I'll just quickly take you through the products that I'm going to use. So I'm starting with a color scheme of blue and gold. My school colors were purple and gold. So I wanted to keep something in common there, but not um, really scream purple and gold because there's a lot of purple in my school um, school days pages, and there's no purple in the pictures that I'm going to use today. And I just wanted to kind of have a bit of variety, but also have something in common. So I took um, a little note from chapter three, I think it is, of Amy Heller's Kaleidoscope Color Workshop, um, where she talks a lot about using blue and gold and different shades of blues and, and yellows and things like that together and came up with this combination. So I've got some yellow paper from Sweetest Thing by My Mind's Eye, some uh, blue navies and, and then a lighter blue and kind of a teal shade in there from Woodland Park by October Afternoon. I'm going to use a few little bits and pieces from this border sheet. This is from Hall Pass by We Are Memory Keepers. That's their new school collection. And then two lovely neutral b-sides. So um, neutral in in the pattern here, I mean. Um, this is from Bella, Bull Bella Boulevard's Thankful Collection. And this one um, does have a really gorgeous A-side as well if you like autumn tree type pictures. But I just love the richness of this blue. It's really nice. And this is also from that same collection and that's a brown on brown uh, crosshatch print with a multicolored stripe and dot on the other side. So those are, those are the papers that I ha have pulled out for today to go with that blue and gold color scheme. 
I've got the Woodland Park blue on blue um, letters and you're going to laugh. I'm going to use these same turquoise glitter letters that I've been on a kick with lately. And the reason I wanted to pull in this turquoise is because I also wanted to use this school themed washi tape that reminds me of the, when, the, um, when the blackboards used to be green or the chalkboards anyway. And, and so it looks a bit like notes on the, on the board. Um, so that's American Crafts. That's uh, freckled fawn washi tape. I've pulled out some little labels from our Mulu and a few die cut pieces from October Afternoon. Now those are from Woodland Park, but then I realized that it also really goes well with the colors from 9 to 5. There's still those two shades of, of teal and blue a little bit of aqua in there. So I've pulled out the brads because this um, I haven't even opened that and that needs to be remedied. need to use them. Um, I pulled out this so that I could use a little bit of the yellow and there's also a plain aqua label on there and that's um, Sweetest Thing by My Mind's Eye. And this new set of, um, of stamps, this is a two-piece exclusive set and it's designed by Studio Calico for two peas in a bucket. It has all sorts of great little things. A frame with journaling. I love this little arrow frame. Lots of nice little words to go in and stamp to just finish off a page. But also days of the week. Um, and that lovely little chevron. So lots of useful things in this set. And I'm going to use that today. With this sketch. Um, it goes this way. And uh, I hope you will join and maybe uh, scrap along with me this week. If I'm going to shrink a sketch slightly, like using just two photos instead of the four that are included in the original design, um, one of the first steps I tend to do is to add another layer of pattern paper to bring in part of the page and make it a bit smaller. So I've just added the blue polka dot on top of the brown so that now I have a brown border, but then I have this just ever so slightly smaller space to work with on top. And then it's quite key to this design to place the photos first and then add all these other layers because if I add all the papers here and then get to the picture, it may be that I haven't left enough room to include the whole image. So if I work with the photos first, I can always make the paper strips smaller if need be, um, harder to go the other way around because the pictures need to, um, to fit. So I'm just going to add these first. And because this picture has a wider subject, more people in the picture, I'm going to make this one further um, to the edge of the page. Then I can overlap this one. And this one can have a little bit more space on this side because um, I've got all this empty space here. There we go. Okay, so now I can start adding my paper strips and I want to include punched um, border pieces along the way. And I have a few different pieces that I'm going to include. So I have that blue from the October afternoon and that's gonna go here on the edge so that I have that darker color on the side. And then I also pulled in some chevron from the chili bean soup staples because I wanted to bring in that turquoise color a little bit more. So this is the sort of setup I'm looking at. So I'll go ahead and adhere those in place. And then I'll start adding in the border pieces to dress it up a little bit. So I've got dark blue. And then I'm just watching how much of the photo I'm covering up because I don't want to cover up any of the people. And now I can start to do borders. Now I cut this one um, with the number two pencils from that Hall Pass school themed border sheet. So this one isn't punched, but it's a printed border. And I'm going to add that right on top of the turquoise because this box is quite big and heavy at the moment. So I'm just going to make it a little bit smaller by adding it a piece on top. Then I want to add some punched edges. So I want to use this yellow honeycomb. But you might remember when I pulled it out of the box last week I immediately said I wanted to cut these out and use them on another layout. So what I'm going to do is cut my strip from the middle of the page and um, so that I don't lose these pieces that I want to use on another layout. Now I just have the middle piece to work with so I know I'm not going to accidentally 
cut away any of that pattern that I wanted to keep. And I'm going to use the Tickets Please Border Punch. So I'm just punching along the edge, moving it along to line it up with the picture, and punching again. And earlier in the year, I used this one and punched on both sides to make that strip of tickets. Oops, I missed one there. Um, but this time I just want it for the edge, so I'm not going to go back and do the other side. So with that all punched, then I can line this up on the side where I want it to go. And then I'm going to cover the join with that turquoise chalkboard washi tape. So I'm just looking where, where I want to place this because I don't want the turquoise to show through the gaps, I'd rather the blue. So just get it in the right spot for that to work. For the tape, I'm just going to run enough to hold it over the whole page, move up to where the perforations in the ticket start. And then I can tuck those edges behind. So really easy ways to dress up just little spots on a sketch. So instead of having the straight mat or just a plain line, I've got that printed piece, some tape, a punched edge, and we're going to add some more um, punched edges before the fin before the layout's finished. So at this point, I want to go ahead and add my title and work out where my embellishment's going to go. This sketch has a title that goes vertically up the side of the page, and I want to use two different kinds of lettering, so one style for each of two words. So just wanted to give you a little um, tip on how to get that lined up well so that you don't have to guess at where things are going. So one of the easiest ways to line up titles into your space is to spell backwards, but then um, you get to a point where you're at the beginning of a word and you want the stickers to overlap so that they read as one title. So what I do is I spell it backwards until I get to the first letter and I haven't put that sticker on and I know where it's going to go and I can see and just kind of just barely place it and not stick it onto the page in the slightest and then I can come into the second um, set of stickers and spell that word backwards and that way I can just underlap that letter, then I can reapply this top letter, and then it's really easy to just spell backwards from there. And that makes it really, really simple, and I don't have to worry or plan ahead or get to the end and find I've run out of space. Now, instead of adding the round embellishments in this row and having to fit all my journaling into a little circle, I'm going to adapt this center column. I'm going to put most of my journaling on this library card, and then I have assorted little other pieces that are going to go in with this, but they're all um, small rectangles. So I know that I'll be able to just kind of tack them in, however, and layer them up. So I'm not I'm too worried about their placement now. I just need to worry about getting the library card in a space that'll be good. And then I wanted to add a little bit more um, border work. So I, I went ahead and took a little bit more of that um, teal paper, but turned it over to the polka dot side. And with that, I'm gonna use the notebook paper edge, which works exactly the same way once you put the cartridge in. And just punching and moving along to the next one and punch again. And I think the notebook paper edge is a great um, punch to have near your workspace to work with scraps because sometimes you've got all those extra little pieces of paper that are on the table, but it doesn't always, they don't always, um, they don't always have the right amount of detail that you're looking for and just being able to add in that edge can really help. And the other thing I really like with this one is that it works really well to just put a few pop dots behind um, the punched part on just one corner. So this top corner or in this case the bottom corner, whichever way you want it to work, and um, can give you 
a, a bit more texture so that you can overlap and see the shadow on the page and just um, works really well for a bit of dimension. Added a few layers of that notebook paper punch with some pop dots and that little tab from the Ormulu strip and then did my journaling on the library card. But now I want to start adding a little bit more embellishment and I also want to make sure that I include the names of the people in this group. These are the people from my actual class and this was everybody from the whole school that was being um, honored at the banquet and I've realized that I've already forgotten a couple of the names of the people in this group so I want to make sure that I get these written down since these were my classmates and um, before I forget. So I went to one of the strips on that hall pass um, piece of paper just the same one with the pencils and wrote our names in the gap underneath the alphabet and I'm going to tuck that up at the top here and just put it underneath that strip but make sure I'm not covering up anybody's head and then kind of angle it slightly different to what the photo is and that will make sure that I don't forget that and then I want to add all these other little bits and pieces into the embellishment here so I want to make sure I include the date I have a little piece from October afternoon to write that and one of the things that I tend to do is just ignore sometimes if there are little lines to show that you're supposed to write the day, the month, and the year. Um, because sometimes you don't know. I don't remember the exact date of this. I know that it was in May of 95, so I'm just going to go with that. And then for the location, I know this was at my high school, and there's plenty of information in my um, already in my album that explains the SHHS stands for my school so I'm not worried about just using the abbreviation there. So I have this one to include and I might put that down here and just pop that up on top so that it's linked into this card um, because I don't have, I'm not missing anything here, I'm just covering up someone's jacket on an empty chair. So that might work well. Or I could go onto this side which actually I like the shape of that better because then I end up with everything on the layout aside from the title is essentially in a triangle on this side so it's kind of a half pyramid shape so I think that's where that will go and I'll put a pop dot on one side and flat adhesive on the other And then I can add in the other pieces. So I've got the pen and the little photos enclosed. And strangely, a five. I know there are four people in this picture, but the journaling explains that really it was five students per year group. And one of the students in our year group didn't come to the banquet. So really there's five. And I've explained who's missing in the journaling. So I'm going to go ahead and use the five as a bit of embellishment and these and I wanted to use one of those little label stickers but I also wanted to dress this up a little bit with some stamps so I have pulled that documented stamp from that new Studio Calico for two piece set and I'm just going to pop that right on top of the library card so that it looks a bit like an office style and then I can add these pieces over the top and not worry that I'm um, going to eliminate my potential space for stamping so I'll do the stamping first then add the different pieces of paper I tend to finish off a layout with little gems or a sprinkling of ink to try and create some sort of line for the eye to follow. But this time, since I had those brads that I wanted to use, I started with the um, the brads that match the color scheme from that set of fancier brads that um, that I pulled out at the beginning and then just had a look at the layout to see what color did I really want to bring into the design a little bit more and that was the yellow. I thought the yellow would contrast well in the two corners to bring your eye to all the important stuff in that triangle. So I just pulled some normal plain yellow brads and sprinkled them along the way in that diagonal line to finish everything off. Now 
Um, there's also a really specific question about one of the Jenny Bolin border punches. So today I've got a special little extra to share with you, which is a quick card design um, with that border punch. So hold on just one second and we'll make that too. Okay, here's that punch from Jenny Bolin for Fiskars, and this is available here, two piece, and it looks like a little row of houses or a city skyline. So I've just pulled out one card blank and some scraps of paper from my um, off cup basket, and I'm just going to pull together a really quick card using those scraps and that uh, punch and a couple little stamps. I'm going to start with stamping a phrase right at the bottom of the card and it's um, a little quote by Studio Calico from um, the movie Ferris Bueller's Day Off. So I'm just going to stamp that at the very bottom of the card and and you can laugh at the fact that I don't own the right size of acrylic block and I'm just going to make it work with the smaller block. I think I'll just stick with navy again. So I'm just going to stamp that right at the bottom of the space. Move the stamp and ink up the rest of it. And then I'll just use a post it note to cover this up so that I don't accidentally and then I can just line it up and stamp the second part. Really quick and simple and then I'm going to do a box of this pattern paper and the punches from the nice contrasting color. I inked the edges of this piece with the same color that I'm doing all the stamping in and then I'm just going to punch a strip of the houses and one of the things I really like about the Fiskars punch is this grid because it's really easy to see where things are. Now this space underneath the handle is where the punch design is so it's a little bit easier to see on the Fiskars punches from the base of where things line up. So then just move it over and match up the picture and punch again. And that's enough to go across my card. So just cut this into a smaller strip. can see where that's going to go. I can add a little ink to get rid of the white edges. And then I can add another layer to make more of a little city. So I'm going to grab um, some navy pattern. So I've got some of that left from the layout that we just did. I'll just punch another set and a few little rows and then I'll have my whole little neighborhood. So you can add as many little streets to your neighborhood as you want and then just make sure that the one at the bottom of the um, design is the contrasting color from the other rows and that way it'll be really easy to see what the design is so it's clear that it's a row of houses or buildings. And then 
as long as you've picked a pattern that's quite plain, you can stamp the sentiment right on top here. Or if this design is um, something that's a bit too bold, you can always stamp it on another piece of paper and cut it out and pop it on top. So I'm going to um, use one of the phrase stamps from this set by Studio Calico, which has um, all sorts of things that work really well on both cards and scrapbook pages. So I'm going to use this congratulations and create a little sentiment block in the top corner. Here's my finished card, really, really quick and simple. And of course you can make it way more ornate if you're, um, if you're somebody who really, really loves and is talented with cards. But I just wanted to show you that quick technique of how quickly you could make a card or use this design in a scrapbook page by just taking a border punch and repeating it. And while I love it with the houses to make a little neighborhood, you can indeed do it with pretty much any punch. If you take one border punch and just repeat it in different patterns or different colors, you'll get a great look um, that will really catch the eye and look um, very unique in your album. So with those two projects finished for this week, that leads us to this week's challenge for you. And that is to use your border punches. Pick whatever is your favorite or pick a border punch that you have and you haven't gotten enough use from to make it worthwhile. And make a project with that border punch or put plenty of punches to use on the same page. Upload it to the gallery and share it with us and I hope you enjoy this week's challenge. Thanks for watching. Join us next week for the continuing adventures of Glitter Girl and the ongoing mystery of the scrapbooker behind the mask at twopeasinabucket.com.